Scotland's Moray Firth. It's a sedimentary basin and some of it just creeps on shore, offering the chance to see some of its structures that otherwise are only imaged on seismic data. So this is Clashack Cove on the North Moray coast. The rocks here are Permian dune sandstones and there's a really spectacular fault. It's a really famous fault. Let's go down there and have a look at it. Typical Aeolian sandstones, like these Permian ones, are well sorted and have a high porosity, and that means that they fault in a particular fashion. Let's take a closer look, first taking in the kinematics of the main fault plane. So this is the fault plane, and I can see that there's a striation running down like this, oblique, pitching off like this, but still mostly down dip. So it's a dip-slip fault, and actually the hanging walls move down, so it's a normal fault. So this is the main fault face, but if you look in there, there's a narrow zone of highly ground up dark rock, and that's the main fault core. But as you move into the hanging wall to the fault, you can see these other fractures. These wispy seams are deformation bands, typical of weak faulting in porous sandstones. When only a little buried, the faulting happens by grain repacking, but by about one kilometre into the subsurface, the grains can break, so these deformation bands are cataclastic, and they stand out prominently on the outcrop. And these micro faults in the otherwise intact Aeolian sandstone constitute the damage zone. So we've got a classic example of a fault core damage zone relationship here. The damage zone, represented by these dispersed deformation bands, can be found many metres out into the faults or rocks. So this is a deformation band wandering its way down through this really porous sandstone. Very typical of deformation bands, these micro faults. They're pretty irregular and wispy and they splay into these complicated branching networks. So you can see these deformation bands are quite widely spaced but they extend for a long way out from the main fault zone over there. The pattern of micro faults define conjugate pairs, and we can infer from these the stress regime under which they formed. The maximum compressive stress, sigma 1, bisects the acute angle and therefore was vertical, while sigma 3, the minimum compressive stress, was horizontal, which is consistent with the Clashack fault being a normal fault. Well, that transect's pretty dramatic, but let's go to the other side of the bay where we'll see another section. So we're looking west. This is a mirror image of the section we've just seen. And the Clashack Fault is in that dark gully, dipping to our left, which is of course south. So let's look at the deformation bands in the hanging wall again. which is showing about the graffiti, where there's some really spectacular deformation bands that are slightly curious here. Look here, one of these is a reverse fault.
So this is another conjugate fault pattern, but one set of faults is reverse and the other is normal. So if sigma 1's like this and sigma 3 is like this, well that sigma 3 direction is essentially perpendicular to the main fault, which implies that at the time these deformation bands formed, this fault couldn't support the shear stress. It was a free surface, so the stretch trajectories become perpendicular to it. Hence this orientation. So the reverse fault here doesn't imply reactivation or inversion of the fault, simply the local tweaking of the stress trajectories. Clashak Cove is a great place to examine faulting in porous sandstones and to relate the development of arrays of small faults that comprise a damage zone to the formation of a normal fault in a sedimentary basin. The Clashak Fault, popular today, it's a bit of a gem.